Hey everybody, it's Seth with Jensen USA and today we're going to take an educational look at the three different wheel sizes in mountain bikes. We're going to start this off by uh, talking a little bit about what you've probably read or heard about the different sizing uh, that we have in wheel sizes. Now, you've probably heard things like 29er is the death of 26, 27, 5 is going to be the death of 26. But we at Jensen like to think of this as more of an opportunity to make sure that you get the right type of bike for the type of terrain you're doing, the type of riding you're doing, and the type of person that you are, uh, looking at body size characteristics like that. So let's talk a little bit about the three different wheel sizes. Today we have three bikes to compare. They're three different brands, but the thing that brings them all together is that they're all basically the same type of bike, which is all mountain, in a six inch travel size medium frame. Now this makes it really cool so that we can compare how the different wheel sizes affect the way that each bike rides differently and how it's more suited for certain types of terrain or riders. Um, the three wheel sizes are going to be 26, 27.5, and 29. Now the most common one is going to be 26 so let's start there and move on down and then we'll head on to the next most common. So the first bike we have here is an Ibis Mojo HD. This is going to be a 26 inch wheel size. So the 26 inch wheel has a bunch of really cool characteristics to it. Um, the first one is going to be its playfulness. This is the smallest wheel size which means the least amount of weight and the uh, least amount of inertial mass or rotational mass uh, on this wheel. So that means that it'll uh, whip into corners a little quicker, it'll lean over faster, it takes less body English to really move this thing around, which makes it one of the most fun wheel sizes while in the air going through tight techie sections or flipping through trees really quickly. Uh, that has made this kind of the prime wheel size for 26 inch downhill guys, right? This is where they tend to like this because they're getting through tight techie stuff, they're doing jumping, that kind of stuff. So free ride, downhill, dirt jump, and even into the all mountain has always tended towards this 26 inch wheel size. Uh, it does mean that this is also going to be one of the lightest bikes uh, as far as wheel sizes go because it's going to have the least amount of mass surrounding the hub. Now, with that being said, there are some downfalls such as contact patch size is going to be smaller, which means it's going to be less grippy for braking, accelerating, um, going into berms and corners and stuff like that. You're going to have just a little bit less grip in this. So you have to trust your skills just a little bit more than you're going to trust the grip of that tire. Uh, but with that being said, this thing's really fun. Now the downfall is you can't roll over stuff quite as well as you can on a 29er. And that's because when it hits a square edge, it takes more force to get it to roll up over that square edge. So you do have to kind of pick and choose your lines on this bike a little differently than you do on the other ones. Lastly, if you're on the smaller end of the spectrum, generally these frames tend to be a more compact feel and so a smaller person tends to be a little happier on a 26 inch wheel. Now, that kind of brings us to the next category, the second most common wheel size, which is 29. So let's head over there and uh, look at the Intent Carbine 2.9. Uh, these 29ers took a long time to penetrate the market. And the reason is, is because frame manufacturers had been building 26 inch frames for so long and they had a lot of money invested into jigs and molds for a 26 inch wheel size and a 29 inch wheel just doesn't plug into that very easily. So it took quite a while for them to find that there was a value in it. Second, quite a while to then reinvent all these molds and jigs. But that brings us to what we have today which is these awesome 29ers that are built specifically for the wheel size to incorporate everything from no travel up to long travel bikes. Now the cool things about 29 is that this has really great rollover characteristics, great inertia for maintaining speed, as well as great contact patch. That contact patch is going to be the biggest out of all three bikes and that means that in cornering, going down rock faces, and braking you're going to have a lot of grip that will keep you really planted. 
Uh, beyond that, the rollover characteristic takes the least amount of force or power to get over square edges, so you can kind of reinvent lines with this that you wouldn't normally take with a 26-inch bike, and you can just kind of go straight and plow through them. That is also one of the downfalls, though, to 29ers, is some people, like myself, really like the playful feel of a trail, and the 29er can kind of dumb that feel down just a little bit. And so for some of us, that's not always a selling point. But there are times and persons who are going to like this. The last thing that's kind of a, a little bit of an issue with 29ers is a general rule, you're going to up the weight. And that's because you have bigger tires, you have more spokes or longer spokes, you're going to have a wider rim, so it's going to be heavier. You're going to have to have bigger frames. So generally, there's a bit of a weight penalty to riding 29ers. With that being said, these bikes are coming in very light, especially in the carbon builds. So it's kind of one of those issues that's a bit of a non-issue. Now, that brings us to this last bike here. Now, this is a Giant Trance Advance SX. Uh, this is their all-mountain bike and new for this year. Uh, Giant has really jumped into the scene doing 27.5 almost entirely through their lineup. And the reason this is, is because the 27.5 wheel size by a lot of people is kind of considered the Goldilocks uh, wheel size. And the reason that is, is because it's just right. Um, the idea is that you're gonna mate a 26 inch frame with all its fun nimble characteristics with some of the fun rollover characteristics of a 29 inch wheel and you come out with 27.5. Now let's get rid of one misnomer real fast and that's that 27.5 or 650B uh, is not actually 27.5. Generally this measures closer to 27.1 and that actually comes into play because that means it's going to behave a little bit more like the 26 than the 29 but when we look at some of the numbers that's okay because the numbers that matter match the 29 a little bit more while some of the other numbers that matter match the 26. This means we really get some of the pros of both wheel sizes with very few of the negatives of each of those wheel sizes. Some other things that make this really cool is very little had to be changed on the frame. In fact, a lot of 26 inch frames can be adapted to fit the 26 inch wheel size. Um, and so that makes this bike really cool for people who are smaller to mid-size as well as some of the larger size people, but it very much fits those smaller body sizes, um, but gives you a lot of the characteristics of that 29er. Uh, the next thing is there's not much of a weight penalty to this, uh, at least in comparison to the 29er. And so that definitely means that this bike is going to be kind of the do-all bike for that. Now, with that being said, this is a bit of a new market for us, uh, but it is penetrating way faster than it did with the 29ers. 29ers took eight to 10 years to really get a hold in the market. This has been about a year and a half, two years to get this one really going with lots of great products and aftermarket support continues to grow uh, for this market. So we really expect that this bike is gonna kind of uh, be one of the primary wheel sizes, especially in the all mountain category and it definitely gives you a lot to choose from. But remember, you wanna choose this stuff for the type of terrain you're riding, the size of rider that you are, or the type of rider you are, plus uh, the kind of weight factor that you're looking for uh, in these wheels. So with that being said, I think that's a pretty comprehensive look at how you should look into deciding which bike you're looking at and which one best fits you. So this has been Seth with Jensen USA, your cycling experts. <music>